Can I put this in my pocket? Maybe. Maybe not. All right. What would you guys like to pray about today? We're glad Mr. Ronald's back. He spent a five days in the hospital. So we're glad you're back. Uh-huh. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Woo. Is she still in the burn unit? Is she still in? She's home. Oh, cool. Oh, I'm sure. But she is alive. Yes. Amen. Yes, he is. It's absolutely amazing. All things are possible with him. Glad to see Mr. Jerry here today. Yay. Tiffany, pray for your mama. And a tummy ache. Okay. Uh, uh huh. No surprise there, Tiffany. No caffeine at two in the morning. Pray for an afternoon nap <laughs> if you were up at two. Uh, what else? <coughs> oh, good. Okay. All right. All the latter folks fixing to hit the ground running tomorrow. Yay! All the millers from Lakeview, where is that crowd? <clears throat> Miss Neal? Okay. Guys? Us? Okay. Anybody want to share anything cool that happened to you this week? Something cool God did? Well, I will then. Um, so, um, he does something, you know, awesome all the time, but uh, middle of the week I had, uh, you know, with uh, being home and, and having the boys and <clears throat> trying to find things to do and um, ways to spend our days and um, so that there would not be um, little dead bodies littered on my front yard. Um <laughs> Been there, done that, anybody? So um, we went down to uh, Alligator Adventure Tuesday at the beach. I said, well, we're either going to the zoo, we're going to, uh, I want to see some animals, right? So uh, we were either going to go to Columbia. I didn't want to drive all the way to uh, the zoo that's um, in Ashboro, even though that's a really cool zoo, and because uh, I really like their warthogs. <laughs> Y'all like warthogs? They're so cool. Um, and that reminds me, let's pray for the brothers, because they've uh, been missing them too. And not the warthog thing, but just they like nature. <laughs> they watch the documentaries. That was my only connection. Are you all with me? Okay. So um, we ended up going down to Alligator Adventure because we had never been to that. And that's a really cool place. They have an albino alligator. I mean, and, and he cannot be, it was actually a she, could not be out in the sun because she'll get sunburned. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, watching them feed them. Do you know those things propel up into the air quite a few feet? Really, I would not be near an edge of something if they're hungry. 
yeah, you can do that. Um, I was surprised. Um, but anyway, uh, the, one of the reasons I went down there is I wanted to buy Elijah a uh, Easter suit. Solomon's wearing his from last year. And um, poor little Solomon, you know, the little hand-me-downs. You just have to wear what is passed down to you. It's just the way it rolls. So um, then they couldn't find anything. I mean, you went to the children's place, Gap, Old Navy. And I thought, people don't do Easter anymore. I mean, what's up, what's up with there's no, no kids' suits or anything? And uh, I didn't want to go to Belk's because I don't want to pay $100 for him to wear it for one Sunday for one year and not doing that. So um, Walmart didn't have anything. I mean, I, you know, so then uh, we came back and I went uh, Wednesday <coughs> to City Trends. I could not find City Trends, couldn't find anything here in Dillon. Went to Roses, couldn't find anything. And I was just thinking, what in the world? So um, Friday morning I was sitting there thinking, i got to go to Florence. I do not want to drive to Florence, and I do not want to pay what Belks is going to charge me for a suit, because I think that's ridiculous that you wear it one time. But, mm -mm. So uh, I was just sitting there, and it wasn't just the suit. I was feeling sorry for me. Anybody? Why do people have to? I have to always watch these kids, you know, and yeah, it's having a pity party, and nobody likes me. I don't have any friends. Y'all ever feel like that? Anybody got? I don't even. I don't even have any friends. Anybody calls me. <laughs> right. Just you know, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. You know, I said, Lord, I just need you to show up. I just need to know that you care. Would you just show me you care? Cause you're really the only one I've got. Nobody else cares. Anybody? And here comes Molly walking in from working out up, um, and she saw Mr. Tony. And you know what Tony gave Molly? Not one suit, not two suits. I mean like 10 to 12 suits. I know. I could not believe it. And I just sat there, and you know, I just started crying. And you know what I did? I hit my floor. And just, thank you, Jesus. I just needed... One suit. <laughs> and it wasn't about the suit. You know what I'm saying? It was just about I needed to feel some love from the Lord. So anyway, um, and I felt bad because Solomon wanted to wear all of them. They're 10, so they fit Elijah. They don't fit Solomon. So y'all go on about what Solomon's gone on, got on today. He's Yeah, he'll grow into them. And y'all know Tony buys life some good-looking suits. I mean shoes, four boxes of shoes. Unbelievable. Isn't the Lord good? It just, you know, just those little small things that uh, I was... In. No wonder I couldn't find anything. He didn't want me to find anything. He had something in... in so, you know, that's what we got to focus on is he's got something in, in view for us if we'll just be quiet... And uh, it's amazing, I want to share this with you before we get good and started in praying. Um, you know, I always go back to the last word that he gives me. And it's in uh, Isaiah chapter um, 30 and verse 7. And this is when uh, the children of Israel were trying to go to Egypt and get help. You know how we'll try to go get other stuff? Or, or help from others, or we try to fix everything ourselves. And he says, For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this, their strength is to sit still. What's that tell you? Their strength is to, uh, Isaiah 30. I think I'm on 30. Yeah, Isaiah 30. Verse 7, but you got to go read that and get the context of they had gone to Egypt, they were trying to get some help, and God just said, look, you know, I've given you the bread of affliction, I've given you adversity, but your strength is to sit still. Wait on me. I know. <laughs> it was glorious. So uh, anytime I, the Lord gives me, you know, these, these words, I hang on to that until he gives me the next thing, right? Tells you to just sit still. 
Be still and know that I am God. <laughs> I'm going to walk all over everywhere, Myrtle Beach and, and half a Dillon to find a little suit. And then I didn't have to. All I had to do was sit still. And here comes Molly in with, these suits were unbelievable. Matching bow ties. You know, the, the shoes, the shirts, the ties. So Solomon picked out his own outfit today. And it's one that, uh, so he's got on a little bicycle tie that does not match what he's got on. But hey, no, no problem. Who cares? So anyway, y'all have some fun with that. Thank you, Lord. I can't imagine how these uh, disciples felt after Jesus was crucified. Let's pray. Lord God, we, our, our strength is to sit still. And for you to, to do what you do, if we'll learn to, to wait and to just love you, do, do the things, be faithful, do our duty, do the things that we're called to do, and uh, take care of what you've given us. <clears throat> Minister, you know, and, and, and reach out to folks and, and do what you've uh, allowed us to do and people you put in our pathways. I just thank you, Father, that we can serve and that we can do what you would have us to do. And I just pray that we would not reach out to the things that are in vain, but to reach out and wait and be still. And quietness and confidence is our strength, O oh Lord. And we thank you and we love you. We just lift up these prayer requests to you, all the things, the folks that uh, have come home, Lord. You've blessed them. You've gotten them out of the hospital, out of burn units, COVID units, um, all the different places that, that we can end up. And um, we just thank you for a resurrection from the dead, Lord, that uh, we can live and breathe in you and that uh, everything that we can turn to is, is just you, Lord, and the beauty. I thank you for the, the earth and the splendor of the flowers and the trees. Thank you for the springtime, Lord. We just bless you for that. We thank you for this day and what it, uh, re what it uh, means to us, what it does for us, Lord. And I just thank you for good friends and our family. And we just want to worship you today. Lead and guide this lesson in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there waiting in the back of the chair. That's just all she did. She walks around the front, then she walks right back. She's already been here twice. There you go. Just sitting and waiting. Mm-hmm. hard to do. It is hard to do. Exactly. You wanted to hold him and comfort him, and he was trying to protect you. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah. Just sitting still. Right. Yeah, the small stuff that we sweat. Yeah, absolutely. But that means something to him. And he'll, he'll go before us, amazingly. Uh, these disciples, uh, the Lord had kept telling them, you know, I'm going to be uh, crucified, and in three days I'm going to rise again. I want you to go to Galilee and wait on me. You think they got that? And we wouldn't have either. We can't be too tough on them. And praying for your mama. Absolutely, in Jesus' name. And so whenever they, um, you know, the, it's all said and done, they are, um, you know, they've been going through this Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There's been several, uh, you know, different celebrations and the holiday, you know, festivities. And at the same time, Jerusalem was packed, and, and here Jesus has been crucified and the disciples are in hiding. They don't know what to do or where to turn. And uh, they don't have any choice but to sit still because they're scared. <laughs> they're afraid of being arrested and crucified like him, right? Judas had killed himself. I mean, they were sitting in a quandary. Think about everything they were uh, going through at that point in time and uh, what was going on in their minds and their heads. And um, 
in the Matthew, now there's you know four different renditions of this from Matthew, uh, Mark, Luke, and John. And what's so fun about looking at all four of them, they all four tell the same story in a different way. But it's just perspective and what that person saw or heard and then wrote it down. So um, some of them say there's one angel sitting at the tomb. Some of them say there's two angels. One's on the rock. One's inside. Right? So it's just um, what they're told and then what they write down. All of it's true, but it's the different person's, what they remember and what's important to them. If you are a writer, Robin's a writer, you tend to write down what's important and what impacts you so that you can impact others. And uh, we see with Matthew, Matthew's all about, you know, his Jewishness coming through. <clears throat> John's about uh, John. <laughs> he's the beloved of Jesus. He reminds me, he's, he's that baby kind of a guy. He and he outran the other disciples, Absolutely. So, uh, but they all are talking about what happened that day, the guards and, and the angels. And so let's start. It says, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, you've got Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And the other Mary was probably uh, the mother or the wife of Cleopas. And so you've got Mary Magdalene, which um, Netta did a fabulous job. On, on Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene and Mary of Bethany, um, and Mary, mother of Jesus. You know, there was a lot of Marys that hung out, but these women were taking care of, of the needs of Christ <clears throat> while he was uh, near the places where they could, you know, follow him and be around him. But uh, they came to see the tomb. Now, why did they go to the tomb? They're wanting to finish the taking care of his body. And we know from the other particular Gospels that Joseph of Arimathea and um, Nicodemus, uh, the, the, he, Jesus is going to be laid in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb, and Nicodemus, they're going to help wrap him. And so Mary and Mary, they want to come back and uh, they want to um, finish with some spices and different things like that. But it says there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. So they were coming to finish the preparations. It had been cut short by the Sabbath. Um, they were fully expecting to find what? A dead Jesus. Yeah, a body. And then an earthquake happens. Now, y'all, this is another earthquake. They had just had one Friday, remember? On the day of his crucifixion, huge earthquake. So here's another earthquake that's occurred. So the seismic rumblings that were happening in that part of the world, I'm sure everybody just thought it was normal and natural. No, and the God of all the universe was quaking the earth, shaking the earth, uh, because there were big things happening uh, with his son. And uh, Matthew's the only one that notes this earthquake on this Sunday morning. Now, did the earthquake cause the stone to be rolled away? For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. So there's a great earthquake, whichever it happened, whether it was uh, God, uh, and we know it was. But then this angel, did, did the earthquake cause the stone to roll back? It says the angel rolled back the stone. Uh, they're pretty good-sized creatures, aren't they? Pretty Could have been the earthquake occurring from the stone. And it, it, the women, you know, were <clears throat> probably afraid of that. That probably had to scare them just a little bit. And uh, their nerves were already kind of shot, right? I mean, you think about the condition they were in because Jesus had died. And the, the non-understanding that, you know, all of a sudden this has happened. And then there's this angel, there's this earthquake, and then his body's gone. I mean, in succession of the things that happened to these people, 
What would be going through your mind? What else could go wrong? Right? When it rains, it pours. You know how you get that, like, ah. Yeah, might as well, because, you know, everything else has been going wrong. So, um, Matthew says that uh, the earth, of course, this great earthquake and uh, the <clears throat> angelic rolling of the stone probably prompted the earthquake. And um, so the earth is shaking, not only at his passion on Friday, but at his resurrection. And then to show that it could not bear his suffering on that Friday, but now to show that it could not stop his rising. So the whole earth shook. And some think that this was, uh, you know, not a normal earthquake. But uh, the word is seismov, a shaking or commotion. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right then. Mm-hmm. So this, uh, uh, Rolling away at the stone then is, um, that's not for Jesus to get out, right? We know he had already gotten out. <laughs> Say it again. It was for us to get in, exactly. And to see what was in there. Uh, what about the guards at the tomb? And what they must have been thinking. Um, <clears throat> that scared them to death, Absolutely. So the guards, in verse 4, shook for fear of him and became like dead men. So the angel, his countenance being so white like lightning, white as snow, made the guards like dead men. So it must have made them fall down, pass out, or scared to death, literally. (laughs) So what... there didn't need to be a st- an angel to, to remove the stone if that's why he'd come down, right? But uh, the Lord, he was quickened by the Spirit. He, re- he resurrected. He came through that. He came out of that. Um, he didn't need to move the stone. And like Rosa said, it was so everybody could be a witness of his resurrection. So it was fitting that angels who were witnesses of the passion, waiting on him to call him at any moment as he was crucified. They were, it's fitting that they would be the ones that would roll the stone away. That they would have this part in this uh, beautiful event that we are celebrating today. Uh, Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. It would be cool if it was Gabriel. I hope that there's pictures and movies that that play back so we can see all this stuff. Oh, isn't that that's in Hebrews? It would have been, It was Paul that says it, so it's later, but it's true. Yeah, because uh, you know, think about how many times we've probably entertained an angel and had no idea, especially in your moments of crisis. 
where that angel moved something just two inches over on the what could have happened. <laughs> mm. Well, this, this stone that enclosed the body of Jesus in the tomb had been like a gate of a prison cell, trapping the body of Jesus in the grave. But of course we know he wasn't in there, and it becomes like a place of rest because the angel sat on it. So that tomb was actually a place of rest. Did you see where there was fighting over the uh, holy places over this, this weekend between the Palestinians and the Israelis? They're fighting over that holy place. Isn't that amazing? He's not there. <laughs> so the message is the guards, you know, they're shaking uh, for fear in verse 4. They become like dead men. The angel answered and said to the women, said to the women, I think that's interesting, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen as he said, as he said. And that had to just hit him upside the head as he said. Again, I have to go back to that last word that God gives me if it was two days ago a week ago, it's that word that, that whatever I read that I'm just clinging on to or that I'm chewing on or that just kind of hits me or like that Isaiah 30 passage where I don't quite get it, I'm not sure what he's trying to say and just hanging on to it. Jesus told this crowd, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to rise from the dead. I will meet you in Galilee. And that's, that's the last word because it says... For he is risen as he said. And then the angel said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Come on in and see what's going on. Now, uh, the John rendition, Mary Magdalene, um, at whenever you know all of this happens, and she realizes that he's not in there, she's run back, and she tells you know Peter and John and everybody. So... Um, she ran back, I mean, uh, verse 2 of John 20. She ran back and came to Simon Peter to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken away the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out, and the other disciple, they were going to the tomb. They both ran together. The other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb. <laughs> First. I, that would have been me writing that stuff. Yeah, I beat him. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there. Now, that's amazing because it looked like a poof, that Jesus' body, like a poof of smoke, had come out of it. So it all just laid as though he transcended out of it. And the linen cloth was folded and laying there. So if a dead body came out of the tomb, it would still be in all of its grave clothes, right? Like Lazarus. And Jesus said, unloose him. But that's not, what they, that's not what they see. They see the linen cloth lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. So that's the beauty of that. And he's back. And that he came out. But he didn't just come out in his body. It's that resurrected body that could come out of the clothes, and that could go through the stone. And that's what's so beautiful, and that's the picture of what we're going to receive one day. We will receive a resurrected body. We'll still be known as we are known. We are who we are. Personality, who we are. But we're going to get this new body that transcends all the different physical laws of the universe. And I find that to be cool and amazing, and beyond my understanding, but uh, that's where we are with this. He's risen. Come and see where the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So the guards shook in fear, and they became like dead men. So the uh, angelic presence made them faint, so they're out. And I'm sure the girls just were like, eh. <laughs> with their you know, mind focused on what they're hearing, 
and looking at this angel, these in, at the two angelic beings, or, or the one. And uh, he doesn't have a flaming sword. I mean, you know, for who it is. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have the flaming sword. He's not doing anything that's, um, uh, you know, like uh, when Balaam's donkey saw the angel with the flaming sword and the donkey wouldn't go any further. It wasn't that kind of angel. But uh, it seems that uh, this, this presence of, of perfect, the, the beauty, the, the purity of the angel um, probably uh, knocked these old tough centurions out, these old Roman soldiers. You saw that Roman soldier last week. He was tough. He was, tough. He was a man. <laughs> oh, Avery, with that beautiful hair. Love it. Ah, the, the, the youthfulness in youth great. Yes. So uh, it overcame these guys. The girls weren't paying much attention. They were focused on the angel and what he was saying. And they heard what they did not expect to hear. What did they expect to hear? I mean, honestly. That he had been stolen or somebody had come and got his body. Or these crazy soldiers did something. But everything they were seeing confirmed to them that what they were hearing and what was in front of them was indeed true. If it were those uh, strong soldiers, they wouldn't be laid out. They'd be up with their swords drawn and, you know, all kinds of great stuff happening that's, you know, that warlike situation. But they're laid out and then the angel's telling them, uh, exactly what they didn't expect to hear. Jesus is not in the tomb. He's risen. He's risen to a resurrection life. Did they understand resurrection life? Do we? Yeah, do we really get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he came back and was not in... That's such a great point. Thank you for bringing that. Um, he came back in his body. It wasn't a resurrected body. He came back in the regular body. When uh, any other of the resurrections, whenever he raised up the uh, widow's son, when he was that boy came back in his regular body. The little girl that was resurrected, the twelve-year-old girl, would eventually yeah they would die again. They would die again. I can't even imagine. Wish they had written a book. So you think about. His resurrection was totally different from what they ex had ex already experienced before. And you know, Solomon asked me so many questions about death. And it's that six-year-old, seven-year-old thing. It's not an unusual thing for the little kids to, you know, process, you know, um, things that they don't understand. And he asked me things about death. And you know what my answer is? I don't know. I haven't died yet. And I keep telling that. I don't know. Because I honestly have not experienced what you're asking me yet. And I said, and baby, when I experience it, I won't be able to come back and tell you. Mm. And he was happy to see his master. Mm -hmm. So I, I bet this stuff. Yeah, yeah, that he was happy to see his master. It's good stuff. Good story. Yeah, the people that were, re I don't want to even call it resurrected. These people were resuscitated, right? Yeah. Like Lazarus was, re he, he came back from the dead, but he didn't get a resurrection body. The widow's son, the, the little girl, Resurrection isn't just living again. It's living again in a new body. In a perfect eternity. A perfect body suited for life in a perfect eternity. And Jesus was not the first one brought back from the dead. He was the first one resurrected. Resurrected. So when they saw him, he had this new body. Because remember, Thomas said what? If I don't see him, put my you know, hands in his side, touch his hands, I'm not going to believe. Well, what happened then? Jesus came through the wall. 
<laughs> you want a suit? I'll bring you 12. You want to touch me? Here I am. <laughs> Woo! So uh, there's lots of graves and tombs, right? There were tombs and graves all over the Mount of Olives, all over uh, the eastern wall of the Temple Mount, the tomb of David, the tomb of Absalom. You think of all the tombs that were there in Jerusalem, but Jesus is the only one that, that, that uh, resurrected. And that's what the angel said. You're not going to find him. He's not here. And he reminded the women and then um, eventually all the disciples, this is what you should have expected. This is what he uh, promised. And the angel said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And like Rosa said, the stone wasn't rolled away to let Jesus out. He passed through material barriers. And um, it was for them to peek in and to see that Jesus was raised from the dead. And that was uh, an invitation to people who had saw, they saw where Jesus had been deposited. They knew Jesus had been placed in that tomb. They knew that it was Joseph of Arimathea's. So there wasn't a possibility of any kind of mistake. Yeah. Bloody and beaten and oozing. Yes. And they just wanted to finish with the process. So um, the resurrection's clear. But you just have to grapple with the meaning of it. It's like we struggle with the meaning of the resurrection. What does this mean for us? And, uh, you know, probably or should have been enough for them to hear the testimony of the angel. But I think that we have to go through things. Mr. Ronald, you just went through an amazing experience. And when you go through and you're so... Close to, to, to the unknown. And then when you come out of that, it's that the understanding that you have as you come out of a sickness that's so close. And, and think about what you guys have been through. So many different things that you've experienced. And you grapple with the meaning of what, it, what is eternity? Who is this person I've put my trust in my belief and I know it's true I know it's true but I know you and I have too had those doubts like really really and you shake it off no 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 it is it is it is so that that grappling of what the resurrection actually means and when they saw it it gave them the ground to stand on even more solid than the testimony of an angel they were eyewitnesses, not ear witnesses. It doesn't matter if you hear it. You've got to see. They were eyewitnesses of what and where. And it's amazing that, that it's women. You could go off on that and have some fun with that. But it's amazing that, that these, these women were eyewitnesses. They went and told the guys, and here comes Peter and John and everybody. When they saw, they knew Jesus had been taken and put in that tomb, and they knew that the rock was over, and they knew that an angel, had, you know, that all of this had happened, and that there's the grave clothes, folded part of the, the grave mask. I mean, everything is amazing. And so when they saw that, the Lord, that his father had not forsaken him, they knew that death had been conquered. They understood more than I think that, uh, it, that, that it took. And then, it, of course, Pentecost, the 40 days that they spent with him on the earth. I mean, all of the things that it took for them then to record what we have here so that we too can believe. And what does Jesus say? Blessed are those who uh, have not seen me, but they believe. John says that at the end. So um, let's see what uh, they told him. Go quickly tell the disciples that he's risen from the dead. He's going before you into Galilee. You're going to see him. Behold, I've told you. Get out of here. I told you. This is, what, this is what's happening. This is the truth. And so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. With fear. Just overwhelmed and great joy. They ran to bring the disciples the word. <laughs> so, oh, he's going into Galilee. This assured the women that they would see the resurrected Jesus. They were think about.
about this. The fear and the joy is that they're going to be able to continue the relationship with him. But when they saw him, there had to be a question of, what's he going to look like? Because I've never seen a resurrected body. He's resurrected. What's he really going to look like? So there's got to be a fear, but a joy, that we're going to get to see him again. I mean, think about that. What if one of your loved ones who's been dead for a long time and you got news that they were going to resurrect, what would you be thinking? I, 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 <laughs> what do they look like? What do they look like? Because sometimes I think about it. My mom and dad's been dead a long time, but sometimes I wonder, what do they look like in that casket now? Because I love them. Right. Are they just ashes? I mean, not ashes, but uh, dirt. Are they just, is there bones? How, how, how quickly, quickly do we decay? I mean, you, know, you think about all that stuff. It's all going to come back together. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, oh, you know the fish are going to nibble. Yeah. Come back together. Amazing. Amazing. So, run to the, and tell the disciples, and, and they did exactly what the angel told them to do. They went quickly, and they, he said, go quickly, and they did. They went quickly. I bet they ran quicker than they ever have. I bet they could have outrun old John at that point in time. Hmm. And so, uh, what happens then? Uh, Spurgeon says that saints who run in the way of obedience are likely to be met by Jesus. <laughs> I love Spurgeon. So let's look and see what happens. So they went to tell the uh, disciples, and behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Now the other ones, uh, it, it tells that Mary did it by herself in the John rendition. Um. You know, when, she had, when um, Mary stood outside the tomb, she was weeping. She saw the two angels. Woman, why are you weeping? They've taken away my Lord. I do not know where they've laid him. And then she didn't realize it was Jesus. And Jesus said, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And when he said her name, Mary... Mary, that had to be an unbelievable experience to run right into him <clears throat> and called her by her name. He did that with several of uh, Peter, shows up to her by himself, just the people that uh, strengthening and encouraging. And he said, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. So they're obeying him. They're telling the news of his resurrection. He's telling them to rejoice. What else could he say? What, what else could they do but rejoice? Uh, King James says, all hell. You know what that reminds me of? And we need to stop. Remember whenever he was being beat and they put the robe on him and the crown of thorns and they said, hell, king of the Jews. And then he says, all hell, which means rejoice. What an what a, a opposite from a couple of days ago to now rejoice. They had to be going through, he, knowing all that he knew, keeping his mind on what he came to do. So they worshipped, and he received the worship of these women. Don't be afraid and go tell my brethren. This first time the Lord calls them brethren. Go tell my brethren. Go tell my brothers. This was an endearing name. And uh, they probably thought that he was going to fuss at them for his, their cowardly running away. But he doesn't. And he tells the women, rejoice. And he tells them, speaking to them, looking beyond their infidelity, and he gives them assurance and calls them my brethren. Very tender terms for someone who had just been deceived and betrayed. Isn't he amazing? He'll show up in the most marvelous ways. 
coming back from the grave. And one day, that's what's going to happen to us. With the shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump in Christ, right? The dead in Christ is going to rise, and they will be gathered together with those from the grave, those who are alive, we who are alive, shall be gathered together, and we'll meet in the air. And we'll all have what? Resurrection bodies. And it cool? He's going to do it all at the same time. I like to think I'm his favorite, but we're all his favorite. All at the same time. Resurrection body. And you're going to fly, whether you like to fly or not, Pastor SJ. You're going to fly <laughs> without an airplane. Very cool. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We give you honor and glory for all of this, this entire story, this entire, and how it all led up to that point in time. All the thousands of years of prophecy, all the prophets, everything that the children of Israel went through, all the different uh, examples of your passion, Lord, of your sacrifice, of the Lamb, Everything, going all the way back to Adam and Eve, Lord, and that sacrifice to atone for their sin. Thank you for the wonderful plan and how it played out through history. And how even now, Lord, things are playing out in history and that uh, your soon coming is, is closer and could be today. It would be wonderful. Thank you for helping us and letting us to worship you on Easter Sunday. Thank you for this holiday in our government. And I pray, oh God, that you would be glorified today. We want to tell you how much we love you and we praise you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, go conquer the world. Next week.